Hi, welcome to the Pulse Shift News, the home of the Mavstar Observatory. Guys, we've got a lot to get through in this video. Uh, so, you know, make yourself a cup of tea or a coffee or some juice or something. Get yourself nice and comfortable in the chair and uh, we'll begin. As you know, on the 17th of every month, we pull the SD cards from the Trimax system and the magnetosphere sensor and we process that we upload the data onto the website and we also uh, do a quick youtube video you know just going over some of the implications of that month uh, that it's took the readings guys it should make the hair stand up on the back of your neck and if it doesn't then you need to check for a pulse because you know we're seeing again this month the same as what we saw the last two months and remember for two years we saw you know just almost a gradual uh, increase in degrees of movement west now we're starting to see something completely different and I think you know it's well worth a heads up or a breaking or an alert at least at the beginning of this video so that, you know we get people's attention and you know it is coming at a time where people seem to be more ignorant to what is going on around them than ever before for some reason so before we do as always a big shout out and thank you to those few that support this video and <clears throat> it is always a few guys you know there's 25,000 people almost now subscribing to this uh, YouTube channel we have 5,000 people view uh, every week um, the data that's on the website and we're getting a lot of traffic but what we're not getting a lot of is support and you know this at the end of the day is your observatory you know it is a unique observatory guys that's all i can say and there are costs involved you know we're sending magnetometers uh, all around the world we've had one come back from uh, the gold coast which is going back there this week now it's been repaired but you know it these these things have costs guys this observatory has got to a point now where you know it, it needs to raise money in order to keep it going at the rate at which we're doing we are a global observatory now and it requires a lot of time there's a lot of processing of data coming in from all around the world now as well as the data that we process and collect and the maintenance of the uh, observatory equipment now so you know we really need support guys this is your observatory at the end of the day so that's all i'll say i'll just mention the link at the end of this video uh, let's get into the data then so guys if you go over to the website uh, a couple of things you're going to notice first of all I've enlarged the charts so we can see that line just above 10 degrees and what's been going on but I want to start when we started to really first pick up uh, some significant activity so if we go back to January this year uh, around the 10th and we got some data from the 10th uh, to the 17th of the second you can see it was pretty much a flat line apart from a couple of blips here and here let me just remove this and then you know uh, the month after that you know they started to increase a little bit more but when we was looking at the data if you remember we was noticing these little sharp very short periods of time where we get spikes in the data where it got to 13 uh, degrees uh, so over the um, you know the two years of covering the data we've not seen anything like this in the significance that we're seeing it now and you can really see uh, this activity picking up uh, from around the 4th so April uh, this year and you can see that, that not only is it spiking up that it's also spiking down at, at you know regular periods of time and this has been continuing guys for at least the last three or four months well that last three three months at least and you can see the uh, spikes that we're talking about now where it goes up to 13 degrees then goes back down to 9 degrees which is around about a 250 mile shift easterly and this is unusual because it hasn't been going westerly a lot you know other than 13 degrees so for some reason whatever's taking place over the northern hemisphere right now it's creating a situation where the magnetic north pole migrates easterly uh, and then goes back uh, to you know around about 12 12 and a half degrees so you know there's a shift almost of three degrees we are seeing at some points 13.99 so it's almost four degrees movement so it is getting closer to that 40 degree mark we'll have a little look at that on the chart a bit later on 
on Google Earth. But this is this month's. I've enlarged the actual chart so you can see what's been going on. And you can see from last month that the activity has become uh, more regular. Uh, at the periods of time when it shifts, you can see larger blocks. So, you know, you can see that there's, you know, more than, you know, a couple of hundred readings at that point where it shifted. So we know that there's no mistakes in the equipment. It's definitely recording change. And don't forget, we record every three seconds. But this change at this particular point here lasted around 12 hours. So when that pole went easterly, 250 miles it did so for around 12 hours and then returned back to around 13 degrees i'll show you where these these positions are relative to where they are on the on the map uh, shortly but you can see that this activity is increasing it hasn't settled back down and stopped it's continued guys so we are definitely starting to see the magnetic north pole wander around and i'm just <coughs> concerned that you know when i done these experiments uh you know just as it arrived on 40 degrees if you remember the compass needle uh drifted backwards and forwards and then when we advanced the magnet just a little bit of the pole you know it entered the weak field lines and reversed now how long this activity that we're witnessing right now continues to do that um is anyone's best guess we will see you know some big spikes come towards that time when the you know the the actual magnetic north pole does migrate a total of 40 degrees and at that point we're going to start to see some spikes in activity of probably migration more westerly by a couple of hundred miles and more easterly by a couple of hundred miles and then we are very very close to a, a full magnetic reversal taking place the poles will will flip from that point and you know We've seen from magnetic excursions that this has happened almost in a time where if you looked at your compass, you'd see the actual uh, rate of speed of shift. And, you know, that could be the case this time round. We don't know whether it's an, an excursion event or, you know, it is a full on reversal. But nevertheless, guys, excursions last for 12 to 14,000 years. So we won't be at the, we won't be here at the end of the next uh, completed pole shift if that is the case uh, so we're never going to find out uh, ourselves because we'll be long dead and buried by then but the point is if we go into a reversal at this point in time the magnetosphere will go down uh, the, the protective shield will go down and what we don't want to see is this pole in between you know a north or a south for a prolonged period of time and it is on the cards because, you know, we are after all, you know, 500,000 years overdue or half a million years overdue, a pole reversal and something has definitely slowed down. So I wouldn't expect a speedy reversal. I would expect a very slow and progressive reversal. And, you know, that could mean for us that the poles um, take a long time before they settle into the new position. And at the same time, we have no magnetosphere protecting us couldn't be any worse guys because we were also as you know in a grand solar minimum where the sunspot activity is low to none at the moment there isn't any sunspots on the disc at least as far as i'm aware of today i haven't checked uh, on the website but you know there hasn't been for a you know a good few weeks now so you know that's where we are with the uh, pole shift we're getting close guys is all i can say and like i've mentioned already you know the people um that are you know blind to what is going on all around them are the ones going to be uh, coming off this uh, for the worst and I don't mean that lightly you know they are not prepared um, they have no provisions set aside for themselves they've got no insurance protecting them I'm not talking about insurance you could buy because there isn't any that exists for this sort of event and you know it, it just puts pressure on those that have prepared because you, you've seen the films, haven't you? What happens when panic starts to set in? And, you know, if you've told people that you're a prepper, remember, those people are going to be the first that are knocking on your door for the, you to help them out. And word travels round very, very quickly is what you've got to remember, guys. So if I was you and you were a prepper, I'd try and keep it to yourselves because otherwise you're going to have very quickly not one not 20 
but probably 200 people knock on your door for your provisions and i've seen people on this website you know uh, not on this website on on youtube you know readily showing not only that they are big preppers you know storing loads and loads of stuff but they've actually you know they've also buried the stuff and showed people on youtube where they've buried it can you believe that they will be the first people when there's no food in the shops that everybody will run to so you know you really want to keep it to yourselves if you are putting up stuff another thing that uh, you guys are concerned about are some of the people that you even talk to with regards to this matter they won't even hear it you know they're, they're oblivious they don't want to even hear it some people you know they've got enough problems with just what goes on in the four walls of their home and you know there's not a lot that you can really do about it even if it's your partner and you're trying to get them on board I suppose the only way of doing it <clears throat> is by you know not trying to uh, brainwash them uh, in a short period of time but just bring them on board very gradually with this you know uh, just point out you know the facts um, not not speculation point out solid facts to these people that there is big changes taking place and at some point they are going to be affected by it and at some point we need to do something you know if you're talking to your partner you know we need to do something um, to safeguard ourselves from you know something that could possibly happen down the road at the moment we don't have any precautions you could even say you know so and so's got precautions they're taking it very seriously you know we should too we don't want to be the ones you know when you know these anomalies take place uh, with no precautions you know if you've got you know if you've got children you know you've got to you know think of those as well so i know it's hard for you guys to bring on new people on board you know even my partner uh, you know understands all the the work I do on this topic at the observatory and you know even it's very for me it's very difficult to talk to her about it but you know slowly you know they do I, I can assure you this they do come around to your way of thinking and at the end of the day if you're taking precautions to you know safeguard yourself from some serious troubles ahead then you know who can who can say anything bad about you for that but I do know uh, you know it's difficult so you know you just have to be a little bit more patient probably not so pushy and you know you just have to bring them on board gradually guys it's the only way um, so let's have a look at the magnetosphere uh, sensor readings over the last month then so as you can see we're looking at the magnetosphere data over the last month uh, one thing you'll notice uh, I'll just bring it up a little bit so you can see two charts worth uh, so you can see also last month's and this month's right one thing you'll notice is that the magnetosphere uh, does shift naturally over a range of about two microteslas and you know you can see yourself guys the chart we've had a couple of uh, periods over the last month where you know it's dropped uh, almost two microteslas and then gone straight back up and then short period of time after that it dropped again um, around this region here I hope the curse is in sync with me actually talking about this because sometimes it's not for some reason but you can see yourself that there is a shift and I don't think it's uh, too much to be alarmed about uh, when it starts to drop more than two microteslas that's a time for concern but you know it's also the same with other uh, data that's collected on uh, other observatories you know their their data if you check it fluctuates over two uh, microteslas uh, during the course of the month it might fluctuate up or down but it usually is uh, around two microtesla shifts or just a little bit over um, you know so I'm not awfully concerned with what we're looking at uh, at the moment uh, but what it does say is that we're getting the same data as what other observatories are you know the shift is uh, around about in the same range so that's good um, you know the other thing about that is, is it lets us know that our equipment is working just as good as theirs the difference is is that we archive all our data so from the time we started taking the readings you can see the very first uh, piece of information that we recorded on these other websites however you don't see that data um, 
uh, and I think that's a shame why they don't archive it like we do you can quickly scroll down the page to the very first uh, bit of data that we collected and you can see how much it's moved over you know a three month a four month a five month period uh, so that's why I say you know um, it seems like normal behavior for the magnetosphere to fluctuate at this point in time by around about two microteslas or just a little bit more than that if we start to see massive drops which I would expect we're going to start to see at some point especially when we get close to that 40 degree mark uh, we're going to start to see shifts in the magnetosphere strength because when there's neither an north or south pole on this planet you know the um, magnetosphere uh, isn't up at its full strength so we could start to see this go down you know guys if we are getting closer to a reversal we could start to see this going down at any point and at what rate it decreases would give us an indication then of how fast the pole is going to reverse so we've got it covered we're not only tracking the position of the magnetic north pole we're also tracking if you like its heartbeat with the magnetosphere strength data uh, so we get good uh, all round um, viewpoint of what's going on that's why I say you know when we designed all this stuff we, we actually put a bit of thought into it and we would know that we could cross reference um, you know a shift with the magnetic poles uh, we've also now the magnetosphere data and also we're also tracking the the highest intensities around the world uh, tomorrow in an upload I'm going to show you uh, building a couple more magnetometers and also a little bit work on the um, cloud chamber because it would be interesting to see just exactly how much uh, more cosmic radiation is coming in and how that whether that increases or decreases and, and a visual aspect is, is a great angle to look at it I think so you know that's where we are with that so just to give you a heads up of what's going on with the magnetometers around the world uh, over in uh, Southern California uh, JD is not due to uh, send us any data uh, for a few weeks. Uh, same with Brad over in Kentucky, over um, in the west. We've got M3, M4. Uh, we're a bit early for data to come in on uh, Tony's over there in Hong Kong. Now, I sent Ricky his magnetometer a couple of weeks ago, and I've emailed him today to ask him if he's received it because I've heard nothing uh, since I've dispatched it to him. So uh, hopefully within the next few days uh, he'll respond to that email and uh, we'll find out what's going on there. He may have had it already set up and running and doing some test data for us. We don't know because we've not heard. Uh, M5, M6 as you know is in Perth on the East Coast and uh, Gold Coast. That magnetometer has been repaired now. Uh, there'll be a new SD card going in it and that'll be shipped uh, this some point this week. Uh, the M5 uh, with Jeff we're just we're just ironing out a couple of bumps in the road and we should get the data coming back in from that one and uh, you know as the data comes in guys you know I'll relate to you uh, I'll give you a quick mention in the YouTube and I'll also put the data up on the website under global uh, magnetometers I am uh, waiting uh, to see <coughs> whether this guy in Germany sends us one of those CGM 49 chips which is what our program runs very nice with and we've also got Scott in the United States who's ordered five who's waiting for him to be delivered so if all goes well uh, you know this guy who's got this one that I only ordered one because I wanted to make sure it wasn't a replacement chip because what I've done uh, and found out before is that when you order from places like Amazon if they haven't got the exact chip they'll send you a like uh, or the nearest one to it and of course it's no good to us so we've done we've both done the same um, Scott over in the United States has ordered five um, they have assured him that they are the uh, you know the right ones same uh, over here you know I've ordered one from this guy first I know he's got another five which I can order afterwards and if they are the right ones I'll place the order for the other five and that will allow us to build more magnetometers guys and put them out at other locations around the world and the first place that we will be putting those is in M8 and M7 to monitor uh, the South Atlantic anomaly and uh, I think it would be great to get not only uh, data on the highest intensities but also on the lowest intensities and we might get a bit uh, clearer picture for doing it that way so I'm going to end the video here guys 
like I said, I'm going to mention the link. You know, uh, you can support us on Patreon, and you can also support us on PayPal. But you know, more than anything, support us, guys. You know, there's 24, 25,000 subscribers now on YouTube, but there's less than 200 people that actually, you know, support us. And you know, what what more can I say? It's your observatory. Uh, there's not another observatory on the internet or on YouTube. There's not another channel on YouTube that talk about these things in the detail that we do. We don't just talk about it. We're actually proactive. We build stuff. We send it around the world. And we are, after all, an observatory funded by you guys, the public. And you know why that is. Because if we was funded by big organisations, it wouldn't be long before they told us what we could put out there, what we could share with you guys. So it's important that we keep it crowdfunded, publicly funded, but more in, more importantly, you know, it's important that we do raise some funds for it as well. So, you know, the links are down there, guys. I always put them in the description and also in the channel comments. So, you know, it's just down to you guys whether you want to or not. But, you know, I put a lot of work into this. And I'm really grateful for the support that we've had up until this point. You know, I just want to keep it going and not let it slip and go backwards, if you get what I mean. So, you know, the links are down there if you want to support us. Guys, other than that, uh, like I say, uh, I'll be doing a video tomorrow showing you the magnetometers, uh, how we build them. And also, uh, there's a bit of work to do on the cloud generator. So if you're interested in that, you know, pop in and, uh, you know, just have a little look at what we're up to. And uh, I'll say what I usually do, guys. Have a great week. And as always, bye for now.